got more. Six, seven, Good morning. Good morning. Can everybody hear me okay? We do have a new sound system, so I can turn to you all now. Oh, yes, I can turn to you all. You can hear me. And they can hear me when I turn. Good, 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 good. I'd like to welcome you to this service for First Presbyterian Church here in Highland Mountain for this day, the Lord's Day, July 4th, 2021 few announcements that need to be made. Uh, Jack Palmer always enjoys receiving cards from well-wishers. Uh, his address is Pretty Manor, 1294 Pretty Road in King, and that is printed in your bulletin so that you can, uh, you can remember that address. Pilot Outreach this month is looking for meals in a box, pasta, rice, soup kits, things of that nature. And we, until we get baskets or something to collect everything, we'll be collecting them up here in the front or over here on this side. I was told by, uh, by Jim Blackwater, there is produce in the kitchen, as well as plastic bags for you to take some home. There's green beans, squash, zucchini. Anything else, Jim? Any, anything else back there? Green beans, squash. Zucchini. Green beans, squash, and zucchini. All right, so we got all of it. Are there any announcements that I might have missed? Yeah. <laughs> if not, would you please join me in our call to worship printed in your bulletin? Jesus Christ, the crucified Lord, calls us to believe the good news of salvation. It is grace is sufficient for us. Let us enter into God's new realm rejoicing. Not in our own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us worship God.
Scripture tells us if we say that we have no sin, we are found to be lying and God will not with us. So let us join together in our unison prayer of confession, printed in your bulletin, confessing our sins both to God and to each other. Let us pray. Holy Three, Holy One, Triune God, we confess that we do not believe that you have overcome sin and death. We are more in touch with the pangs of our weakness than we are with the power of your love. In fear, we worship idols. In despair, we collapse in hopelessness. In rage, we seek to dominate others. O God of David, forgive us. O Son of David, have mercy on us. O Spirit of the living God, grant us peace. Send us out in the good news. Nothing can withstand the victory of the cross, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Hear and believe this good news. Jesus, the Christ, Son of Mary, Son of the Most High God, was broken and poured out for our salvation. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. same way he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes and our second reading is from Mark chapter 14 verses 22 to 25 while they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I was in college, I had a professor who was a good Baptist preacher as well as a very good teacher. He would often keep us spellbound with stories of his ministry and what he did throughout the years. And one particular story that I remember to this day, and it has been a few years since I was in college, 
was one where he had decided to do something to make folks feel more comfortable about what to wear in church. You see, this was the 1960s and 1970s when folks dressed up, had their Sunday best for church. And there were some men who felt uncomfortable. They worked in a power plant the evening and night shift. And they didn't have time to come home to get some rest, to dress up and come to church. So they were not coming. So what Dr. Harris did is he decided to do something about this. And he showed up one Sunday morning in a short sleeve shirt, short sleeve dress shirt, nice pair of slacks, and began to run the service. And he told us as the service went on, he began to notice that the deacons, remember this is a good Baptist church, were all dressed in black, with black ties. And it suddenly hit him like a ton of bricks. It was Communion Sunday. And he asked us, what did I do? I went and I served Communion. And he went and he served Communion because he decided that one needed to come with the right heart, not with the right clothes, to be a part of the table. Now what do we mean when we talk about Communion Sunday? Do we mean that we're partaking of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper? Do we mean that we're going to have something that is to bring us into communion with our brothers and sisters throughout the world? Do we mean that we will be doing the, something that is tacked on to the end of the service that hopefully the preacher doesn't go long so the service doesn't go any longer? Or do we really understand what is happening at the table when we are served and when we serve? So let us take some time to look at the Lord's Supper, what it is not and what it is. The first thing to know about what the Lord's Supper is not is that it is not something tacked on to the end of the service once a month. The Lord's Supper is one of two sacraments that all Protestants agree upon, the other being baptism. And there are those who some celebrate it quarterly, once every four times throughout the year. Some who celebrate it monthly, as we do. And some who celebrate it weekly. It's a part of our book of order that states how we should celebrate and why. It is not an afterthought. In fact, the Book of Common Worship puts the Lord's Supper as part of each service and assumes it will be celebrated weekly. The second thing that it is not is a magical moment. And what I mean by this is there's Nothing magical about the elements of bread and wine or grape juice. There are some who claim that the elements change when the right words are spoken. That meaning they are still, to us, bread and wine or bread and juice, but in reality they become the body and blood of Christ. And while this doctrine is true that Christ is present in the elements, there is nothing that changes them to the body and blood. When the words were once said in Latin, hoc est corpus, this is my body. What did the people who did not know Latin hear? They heard the words, hocus pocus. That's a true story. And you understand why they thought it was magical. And finally for us in the Reformed faith, the Lord's Supper is not just a memorial with symbolism in the elements. Now there are some who say that the whole supper is just a time to remember what Jesus did at the Last Supper and that the bread and the wine or juice are just symbols based on faith. And while we are to call to remember the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper is so much more than just a memorial, something that is in the past. It is something that takes place in the present as well. Now this seems like a lot to understand and it can be. But there is a positive side to the Lord's Supper. So let's take a look at that. First of all, the Lord's Supper is a meal. Jesus gave this sacrament as a meal at the Last Supper. And therefore, it is only fitting that we have a meal as well. Now this can be done in several ways. We can pass the bread and break off a piece as we do. We can have bread ready for consumption. The cup can be given in glasses that we have, or we may dip the bread by intention, or we can have a common cup where all those gathered have a sip during the meal. 
And right now, it's hard to do all of these things due to the pandemic, so we have to make do with what we have. But in the end, we are still partaking of a meal. Now, this meal is several things. It is one of thanksgiving where we give thanks to God for the gifts of creation and redemption. It is also a meal of communion. And in this communion, we have fellowship with one another, with others in the church universal, and with Jesus himself. My son likes to call it community. I like that. And in Reformed theology, we discuss the real presence of Christ. And what this means is that Coming to the table is not just a memorial, as I said before, but it is rather a feast where Jesus is host, and we can encounter him here and now in the present, not just in the past. It is here that we experience the bread of life by both feeding on and being fed by Jesus. John Calvin stated this that this sacrament is a spiritual banquet wherein Christ attests himself to be the life-giving bread upon which our souls feed unto true and blessed immortality. The one who promised us life and that we would never be hungry is the one who sits with us in this time of feasting, being in communion with each other. And while Jesus is bodily present in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father, he is present with us through the Holy Spirit, here and now. It's a mystery how this works, and even Calvin states this by saying, if anyone should ask me how this takes place, I shall not be ashamed to confess that it is a secret too lofty for either my mind to comprehend or my words to declare. And to speak more plainly, I rather experience than understand it. Therefore I here embrace without controversy the truth of God in which I may safely rest. He declares his flesh, the food of my soul, his body, his blood, its drink. I offer my soul to him to be fed with such food. In his sacred supper, he bids me take, eat, and drink his body and blood under the symbols of bread and wine. I do not doubt that he himself truly presents them and that I receive them. The Lord's Supper is also a meal of joy and hope and the power of the Spirit that gives us new life. The Spirit, as I said, enables us to be present with Christ as He is the host of the meal. And the meal is also an indication of the great banquet that will come at the end of time when the reconciling work of God is completed and we share with God and Jesus the great feast prepared for us. And finally, the Lord's Supper is a celebration. The Confession of 1967 says this, the Lord's Supper is a celebration of the reconciliation of men with God and with one another, in which they joyfully eat and drink together at the table of their Savior. They rejoice in the foretaste of the kingdom, which he will bring to consummation at his promised coming, and go out from the Lord's table with courage and hope for the service to which he has called them. When we remember what Jesus told us about the Lord's Supper, we will realize it is a cause for celebration. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we remember what Jesus did for us so that we, who could do nothing on our own to reconcile ourselves to God, would be reconciled to God. And in doing so, should we not celebrate? Often we have the Lord's Supper when we have the Lord's Supper. It is in a solemn, somber tone more akin to a funeral than a celebration of the life and resurrection of Jesus. Howard Rice and James Huffstetter had written that if we could get past the poor dead Jesus mentality and realize the gratitude we have for what Jesus did and is doing, then our worship would change to be one of celebration. They even say that there might be dancing in the aisles of Presbyterian churches. And that would be a celebration to see. There's been a good deal of talk recently about the Lord's Supper or Communion and who should and should not be allowed to partake of the table. The teaching is that those who unworthily eat of the table bring judgment upon themselves and therefore it's the church's job to make sure that this does not occur. 
And we Presbyterians used to do this with examinations by the pastor and the elders of all the members of the church and by giving out tokens to those who were deemed worthy. But there's a problem here. When we do this, when we examine people, we take on the role of God. We deem who has repented and who is able to partake. But in reality, none of us are worthy. If we wait until we are sinless, then none of us would be able to partake of the Lord's Supper. Our Book of Order says this, the opportunity to eat and drink with Christ is not a right bestowed upon the worthy, but a privilege given to the undeserving who come in faith, repentance, and love. Yes, we should examine ourselves, come to the table with the spirit of repentance, but we should also come with the knowledge of God and God's grace and mercy. The supper is a means of grace that reminds us of what Christ did for us, in the power of the Spirit, God uses the Supper to build us up, to make us do whatever it is that He has called us to do in solidarity of fellowship and of service. The Book of Order also states that worshipers prepare themselves to celebrate the Lord's Supper by putting their trust in Christ, confessing their sin, and seeking reconciliation with God and one another. Let us join together today. Prepare the meal that Christ gives us. Prepare ourselves in repentance and in thanksgiving. There's a place for everyone here at this table. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is the universal creed spoken by Christians all around the world. And on this day, let us join together with our brothers and sisters stating the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we go now to God in prayer, I ask that you turn to page 6 of your bulletin and look over our prayer list. Are there any prayer requests that we might have missed? Travis, I ask you to pray for the family of Tim Purdy, that's okay. Heather's stepbrother. He passed away 7 1. Family of Tim Purdy. And Michael Alford is having issues with a lesion. Uh, I think from a Maybe surgical. Okay. Get from the past and a message from him last night. Okay. Any 
many others. If not, let us go now to God in prayer. God of heaven and earth, creator of all things seen and unseen, we join with the church through all ages, praying that you cast out all evil and renew the face of the whole creation. We ask that you grant wisdom and courage to political leaders that they enact in every nation for the common good, the justice that you command. Grant intelligence and generosity to leaders of business and industry so that they may provide dignity and safety for every person and household on the planet, not just for the ones they deem worthy. Grant imagination and passion to educators and artists so that they give clear guidance and true vision, enabling us to praise you for the wonder and beauty of your world. Grant compassion and skill to healers and caregivers so that the sick and suffering, those from COVID, those from other maladies, we ask that they may know your touch through those you have given as caregivers. We pray this day for all who are suffering at the hands of the violent and the power hungry, the greedy and malicious, the ignorant and the misguided, all the powers of evil that are beyond human control. May each one who is afflicted find comfort in your faith, hope, and love to enable them to overcome demonic attacks. God, we ask that you empower your church with the Holy Spirit to proclaim the gospel with authority, for not even the gates of hell can withstand the grace of Jesus Christ. Complete the renewal you began in raising Jesus from the dead, and then all creation will shout with us. Amen. This is the joyful feast of the Lord. It is said they will come from north and from south, from east and from west, to sit at the table with the Lord. This is not a Presbyterian table. It is an open table to all who place their trust in Jesus Christ. Let us go to God in prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We do right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good, and made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turn from you, you remained ever faithful. We thank you, O God, for sending us your Son, he lived among us and told us your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, and then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share the cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and in praise. Gracious God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and juice, that they may be for us the body and the blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ today and with one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. And it is through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that we pray the words Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks for it, and he broke it, saying, This is my body, given for you. And in the same way, he took the cup and he blessed it and poured out, saying, This is my blood, given for the salvation of many. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would those who are going to serve today please come forward. body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Here now the charge. Show the love of God in all that you do. Be faithful witnesses to the grace of Jesus Christ. Live in the power and joy of the Holy Spirit. Now may the love of God, the power of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit dwell richly in you forever. Amen.